Disclaimer, this is a true story from Private First Class Francis P. Wall. It was May 1951, and the Korean War was in full swing. The United States was helping the South, while the Soviet Union was helping the North. Private First Class Francis P. Wall and his regiment were in Chorwong. This was in the North, around 60 miles north of Seoul, South Korea. They were preparing to bombard a village with artillery fire, but that's when all of a sudden Private Wall saw something strange. He described it like a jack-o'-lantern coming wafting down from across the mountain. The GIs watched as the craft emitted an orange glow. It came down from the mountains to the village they were firing at. The GIs who were operating the artillery watched in amazement. They noticed that the object would get right into the airburst of the artillery, but for whatever reason remained totally unharmed. It floated around the village while the artillery was exploding all around it. Not only did the direct explosions not harm the UFO, but all of the debris from the village also did not seem to harm this craft. At first it had glowed orange, but by now it was pulsating a blue-green light. Private Wall then asked his company commander for permission to fire on the object. The company commander said yes, fire with armor-piercing bullets. Private Wall grabbed his M1 rifle and began to fire, but amazingly the bullets seemed to do nothing to the craft. Even though they were armor-piercing, they simply bounced off with a metallic ding sound. However, the object began behaving more erratically. It shifted from side to side frantically, and its lights flashed on and off very fast. Many of the GIs, including Private Wall, thought this may well be Soviet technology. After all, many believe that the Germans in World War II did make real UFOs. It's believed they did this using non-Earth materials and technology. But when the Soviet Red Army invaded Germany and defeated them, they stole this technology. It's thought they did this to beat the USA in the upcoming Cold War. Private Wall then said that the UFO then attacked the US troops. He said they were swept by some form of ray which was emitting pulses. He said this happened in waves that could only visually be seen when it was aiming right at you. He said it was like a searchlight sweeping around. And you would only see these segments of light if it was coming right at you. Whenever this light went on to you, you would experience a burning, tingling sensation. This would sweep all over your body as if it was going into you. All of the American soldiers rushed into underground bunkers. They then peered through windows and slits in the bunkers. Some even tried to fire upon the craft through these slits, but the armor-piercing bullets from their M1 rifles did nothing. That was when all of a sudden the aircraft hovered above them. Then it shot off at a 45 degree angle. It did this at a nearly impossible speed, disappearing into the night sky. As Private Wall said, it was there and then it was gone. All of the men were very shaken up and injured from the event. Not only were they physically injured, but mentally they could barely understand what had just happened. They all agreed to keep this quiet. After all, they assumed everyone would think they went insane. UFOs and aliens were not in the public consciousness back in 1951. Remember, there weren't alien movies, UFO sightings, or rumors of aliens at Area 51. This was all before any of that. So that's why Private Wall and his infantry decided to keep this quiet. They did not want to risk being stuck in a mental asylum. Three days after the incident, the US Army had to cut through the jungle. They did this to evacuate Private Wall and his men using an ambulance. Eventually, they were taken to an army hospital. They were found to have dysentery. This was an inflammation in their colons. This suggests that the light beams from the craft really did go into them. Not only that, they also had an extremely high count of white blood cells. One NASA scientist said they had symptoms which sounded like the effects of radiation. The Korean War ended in 1953, and over the 37 months, many soldiers from every side reported seeing UFOs. These often resembled flying saucers. According to reports, as many as 42 UFOs were seen. That's an average of more than one per month in just over three years. But of course, some of these sightings were likely the same flying object more than once. According to Korean War historian Paul M. Edwards, many believed that these were Soviet experiments. These were based on German technology from World War II. After all, Germany was known to carry out a lot of research in anti-gravity. The UFOs they had were so large they could carry 50 tons of weight, and they were powered by electromagnetic propulsion. 
But in 1991, when the Soviet Union fell, none of this technology materialized. So perhaps it was lost, destroyed, or never existed. UFO sightings during the Korean War put thousands of men under stress. At the time, some believed this was part of US Air Force's Project Blue Book. This was a systematic study into unidentified flying objects. It ran from 1952 to 1986, but they said they found nothing of note and no UFOs. Also, seeing as this UFO was firing at US troops, it was likely not owned by the USA. Some speculated that the craft Private Wall saw was a Chinese vessel. Many believe that the Chinese had technology unknown to American troops. But others say that this theory has been disproved many times. According to Private Wall, the sound of the UFO was like a locomotive steam engine. He also said that the glowing craft was metallic in nature. However, it's not like any advanced Air Force project from any military ever. Even today's most futuristic aircrafts are not like this. Private Wall and his men suffered from the effects of the UFO's rays for decades after the war. Private Wool unfortunately developed PTSD, and his weight dropped from 180 pounds to 136. No matter how much he would eat, his weight loss remained permanent. There was a report filed with the US Army, but no investigation was ever conducted. And to this day, the US Army has not given an official explanation. Private Wool's daughter, Renee Denny, still remembers his story. She said that the story was always the same. It never changed through the years. She also said that he would often have flashbacks and be affected by the sound of airplanes from above. Wall's experiences scarred him all the way until he passed on in 1999. It's not known whether his trauma and PTSD came from the war or from his UFO experience. But could this really have been a Soviet UFO? There's an infamous incident in Russia known as the Voronezh UFO Incident. This happened in 1989 in the Soviet Union. A group of children and other community members witnessed a UFO. Over 20 people reported seeing a disc land near them. They then saw a three-eyed alien being exit the craft. The aliens stared at the horrified onlookers, freezing them in their tracks. It then went back into the disc-shaped craft and disappeared into the night sky. The Interior Ministry of Russia dispatched troops to the area in case the craft came back. After all, they thought it could be an American invasion. The craft never returned and the troops went back to day-to-day -to -day life. But to this day, the story is still told in Voronezh. And it was not just hearsay, this was international news at the time. Sadly, because the Soviet Union back then was very cut off, much of the rest of the world did not hear it. But this suggests that maybe there were UFOs in the Soviet Union. But could this have anything to do with the UFO that Private Wall and his troops encountered? In 2020, the US Department of Defense released their first ever video of a UFO. And in June of 2020, they also set up a UFO task force. This is known as the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force. The purpose is to study unidentified flying objects. Right now, the program is secret, but who knows what they may find out about the past and what they'll find out in the future too. But now it's time to make your voice heard. Comment below whether you think UFOs are real or not. If you want some more amazing videos, then check out my second channel. But as always, thanks for watching. There are some more videos on screen right now. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and if you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to Top 10s.